and everything kind of evens out. That's the way Christmas works, right? And then, uh, you know, I may reserve to the right to complain about my gift a little bit because it was made in China. And the gift I gave you is made in Japan, so it's a little bit better. And then if we, uh, you know, if the year passes and we go through Christmas after Christmas, pretty soon it just begins to seem like a lot of work. And um, we, might, we might start sounding like this, you know, I had to haul in that heavy old tree, and now you want me to put the lights on it too? Well, I had to haul in that turkey, and then the oven didn't work right. Well, I had to go out in a blinding snowstorm just to find the right gift for you. Well, I spent a lot more money, and so we like we start sounding like Scrooge, which uh, we used to quote him a lot because we had a story record that was like that. Fine excuse to pick a man's pocket every 25th of December, and all day long it's Merry Christmas, bah humbug. Or even like the Grinch who said, uh, blast this Christmas music, it's just too joyful and triumphant. So, I got to thinking about, you know, just the fact that, you know, where do all these irritating things come from in inside of us? I mean, and especially Christmas time, it seems like we ought to be able to just, you know, be unselfish. But, um, you know, we've all kind of got a Grinch, I guess, hiding behind our tree, you know, who's waiting to come out and be selfish and get his own way. But I'm sure all of us, you know, we know that that's not what Christmas is about. So, um, but just to get a good look at the sin nature, I think Paul gives us a good look at it in Romans 7. Sometimes hard for me to believe that, you know, my sin nature is still a factor that I have to deal with, but I think even for Christians he's there. So I'm going to go to Romans 7, and I'll start at verse 11. For sin taken occasion by the commandment deceived me, and by it killed me. Therefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy and just and good. Has then what is good become death to me? Certainly not. But sin, that it might appear sin, was producing death in me through what is good so that sin through the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For what, do I, for what I am doing I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. So we see that uh, the sin nature that we have is, is, a, is a master of deception. It, it takes something good and twists it and tries to make it, um, basically tries to make it into something that is a, con a, a condemnation for us. So that, um, uh, and it seems like we, by our nature, fall right into that whole thing where we feel condemned because we can't, com we can't do what the law requires of us. It seems there's, you know, it's very deceptive. I don't know how that works, but it's like, we think we should be able to do the law because really it's so plain, it's so easy. And I think our kids are an example of that. You try to, um, you know, give them a law and they, their tendency is to break it. And, and sometimes as parents, you know, we forget the way we were as kids and then we think, you know, what's wrong with them? Why well, can't they see that if they, if they do the right thing, they're going to have a better life? But um, there's something that's that's twisted in our nature so that we actually uh, believe that we could do it on our own. If, if you know, if everything had been right, <laughs> if people had been nice to me, and you know, and all my life had come together, I should have been able to do the law on my own. So we can waste a lot of time just stuck in that place of trying to accomplish really what God never intended us to do by ourselves. And um, Paul ends up by saying that, O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? 
so it's it's a serious thing. It's not. I mean, the Grinch is pretty harmless creature for the most part, but we all have a sin nature that that has to be dealt with. And um, you know, like it says here, that sin taken occasion by the commandment deceived me, and by it killed me. So this thing is a killer. I mean, it's we have to deal with it. Every person has to deal with it. And um, I think that's what Paul is trying to show us here. So I'm going to read on down further a little bit here. I find then a law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So, really I think um, there's a key here that's really important for us to see, and that is that um, goodness doesn't start with our wills. Uh, you know, that's probably, I don't know if that's really the, the, the gist of the deception or not, but it's like um, we tend to think of our will as being a good thing and that um, we can will to do kind of whatever we want and that and um, everything will turn out good. And it's especially true around Christmas, you know, it seems like there's so many good things that we want to happen at Christmas. And... Um, but what happens is then that everybody wants something a little bit different and doesn't always work out right. But I wanted to um, go on now to Hebrews 10 and just illustrate the fact that it's the will of God that really does save us. So Hebrews 10:5. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin you had no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me, To do your will, O God. Previously saying, Sacrifice and offerings, and offerings for sin you did not desire, nor had pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law. And there it illustrates the fact that um, the law was kind of just a tool to keep people in check until the real solution came, which was Jesus. Then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first, that he may establish the second. So this is Jesus speaking, Behold, I have come to do your will. By that will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. So there you see it. It's like... By the will of Christ, we have been sac uh, sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus. So it's like, in another place it says that, um, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So you see that the old man, the old nature, kind of has us in a trap, because, and he's, he's, he's actually made stronger by the fact that the law is is on his side. And uh, so I think it's a real key for us to, to break free. And you begin to see that there are sides here. There's the old man, which represents kind of our past and the way we've always done things. And then there's the new person of the Spirit, in which, uh, and essentially, Christ has finished the work. It's already done. So it's like we, moment by moment in our lives, have to choose sides. You have to decide, am I going to go with what's, what feels good, what feels safe, because I've always done it this way, or am I going to go with what, what the new man in me is, is by the Spirit bringing? And it, it sounds hard, but really um, the Spirit is right there to help us, I think, and that's what Paul is saying is if we read on into uh, Romans 8. Maybe we'll just do that right now.
There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. This comes right after he says, O wretched man that I am. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, um, there's an illustration here that's helped me an awful lot. And I'll try to, to uh, portray it to you. Um, I sometimes picture my will as a rowboat, like a, just a rowboat that, you know, for years I've been carrying this thing around because it was the thing to do. I mean, everybody has to make their own choices and so you just, you know, you just knuckle under and you begin to try to keep the law on your own strength. And so you, you know, you're carrying this rowboat and um, after a while it, it kind of becomes like a good protection from, you know, um, you know, insecurities, fears, expectations of people because you can kind of develop this this way of doing things. You know, it's, a, it's a defensiveness. It's like I began to um, use my will as kind of a defense against things in my life that are uncertain or insecure. And so the picture is me carrying a rowboat around above my head, upside down, you know, protecting myself from, and it kind of, kind of becomes like my shell. And I'm protecting myself with it. And all the while, there is this river of grace that's just flowing at my feet, you know, that God's put there. And the only, it's like what has to happen in my life is that Jesus comes and shows me that my heart was never meant to operate on its own, and especially not as a defense against life. And what he does is he turns the thing upside down completely and places it on this river of grace and then invites me to get into inside of it and, and ride it. And uh, that's really an illustration that's helped me a lot. It's like a total reversal of what my will on its own would do is to surrender completely to this grace that is flowing and is really, you know, going to take me to better places than I could ever be on my own or ever manage to get on my own. And then in that place, it's like um, the water itself is a picture of the Word of God, that we are riding the Word. It's like we're we're responding all the time to the word and what God is saying and what God is doing instead of, you know, reacting to pressure. Because that's typically what I do is I react to pressure when I get in a tough situation. So I think we read, we read enough in Romans 8 there. I'm not going to drag this out or make this too long here. I think I know, you know, from Romans 8 to um, a lot of what it's like to be just drowned in condemnation, to just feel like no matter how hard I try, I can't keep what God wants me to do. I can't perform, you know, like I'd love to do and be able to do things. And, you know, after a while that becomes like just a a dark place, a very dark place, and, and it's like the the thing that I've found that I have to do is to just um, get up in the morning, mornings are often when I feel the most, you know, just beaten down by it, and um, whether I feel like it or not, begin to to take the side of the Word and to, to begin to tell God, um, you know, this whole thing was your idea. You spoke me into existence in the beginning. 
You, your word is, is more real than heaven and earth. Heaven and earth will pass away, but your word will not fail. And so I'm taking the side of your word. I'm getting on your word, and I'm going with it wherever it's going. And then if you, you know, and then if I begin, if I just out loud begin to, um, you know, speak out uh, words that I've memorized that, um, you know, are really precious to me. And some of them are like uh, Paul's prayers, are just an awesome way to to really get on the side of the word. Um, there's one. For this reason I bow my knees to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. I mean, it, and usually I get about halfway through that, and it's like... Um, you can almost feel the spirit just overtake you. And, you know, it's like you begin to see almost into the very face of God. And, and just that insight, it's like his love for us is much more than we've ever dreamed or can imagine. His plans for us are better than we could ever imagine. And... And we can begin to just surrender to the fact that um, as we trust the Word, it's going to happen. What, what God has planned for us will happen. You know, there's words that He spoke over us when we were small, when we were, before we were born. And as we find those and begin to memorize those and treasure those, um, they become like a, a river in our lives that... It will take us where God wants us to go. And then it's like, you know, that psalm is fulfilled that was read this morning that um, he delivers us from all our fears. And we can taste and see that he is good. And, you know, that really is the way to leave the old nature behind. I mean, he doesn't like the water. <laughs> he can't swim. So, uh, you know, he's left on the bank making rock piles or whatever. But, and not just that, I mean, Christ put to death the old nature. So, it's like, you know, this word out of Romans, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. You know, becomes not a condemning word, but a word of promise. And that's what can happen in all our lives when the scriptures really become that precious and we hide them in our hearts. So I just hope that in this new year, um, that for each of you, the challenges that you face, and you know, sometimes the hardest challenges in our lives, well, really the hardest challenges in our lives are the small things, the little things in life. I mean, I often thought that, you know, I would have to go to Africa or something, you know, to really, really experience God's grace. But there's nothing like God showing up in, our, in, our, in the small details of our lives, giving us a word about what is in the heart of our children that we can treasure, you know, um, giving us a word about our health that... He really is sufficient. You know, He really does want the best for us. Giving us a word about our finances that, you know, He is going to provide. He is, that's His name. He's the provider. You know, that's where it counts in the small details of life. And then, you know, the big things will be easy because 
He'll show us what he wants us to do. So I really hope that this, that in the new year, every person here can really um, claim that word of life and and receive the life that God wants to give, and um, and just see the best year ever as you know God fulfills those words in your life, and that maybe you can. Um, see more clearly what it is that he wants you to do. All right, I'm not sure if I know how to properly end off here, but we can uh, stand for prayer, I guess, and just dismiss. Thanks, God, for all that you are and all that you do. Thank you, God, that we can indeed um, Take the side of your word, Lord, that you've prepared for us in Christ Jesus a unique place, a place that no one else can fill. There's a part for us in him, a portion in him that is meant for us. Nobody else can take that place. Lord, I pray that each of us would find that, God, and that we would hear the words that you've spoken over us in the beginning, Lord, um, even before we were born. And that we would know the power of God in our lives, know that healing, that we'd be able to explore the, the, the full width and depth and length and height of your grace, Lord, that Christ himself may be revealed in our lives, Lord, and he may show up for us and for people around us, Lord. So, God, we commit this day to you again. We just thank you for it. Pray that your spirit will go with us, Lord, and continue to just fill us, and give us joy, strength, life, everything we need to to live um, and thrive and to share life with others as well. Thank you for this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be dismissed.